Hello and welcome to another Voron Designs Clipper video with Maglin. I said probably about a year ago that I was going to go ahead and make a uh, beyond initial setup uh, video for people to get their printers up and running. So with the uh, current state of affairs of the world, I have the time to do that now. So I've decided to do that with you all right now. I'm going to try to make this into several parts so um, people that are looking for one specific thing uh, hopefully can probably find it easier. I will probably have this as one video, start to finish. I don't know. I'll see what I do in editing. Anyway, uh, let's let's get on with this. So the the, the big purpose of this is I, I wanna I wanna show you guys how to set up your clipper config to get your Voron first running. Just want to let you know that there are many ways to go about doing the same thing, sometimes with the same results. Um, I'm just gonna show you how I do things. Other people are gonna do things differently. What I do, I know works. I've used, I've done it multiple times, and uh, yeah, if you follow along and do what I prescribe, uh, I would imagine you would get the same results. But everything is different on everyone's printers because, well, that's that's just part of being a RepRap project. So let's get on with your config. So as I've already mentioned before, you should already know, you should already have your pins put in on your configurations but I want to show you one thing before we dive into the config here and that is if you go to the github uh, this is the Voron 2 github here uh, I obviously have it downloaded and, and have it updated if you go to firmware pin diagrams we have a few pin diagrams in here most recently added was the SKR 1.3 so if you look in here, you can actually see all the different pin assignments. Can you see my cursor? You can. Um, these are all the pin names for all the pins that are on the board. So when you're doing your configs, you don't have to, to do everything as per the, the stock config. You can come in here, see what pins you have stuff hooked up to, and then uh, change your config for that available output or input. So just want to show you guys that. Um, there's a lot of resources that we have that a lot of people don't know about or don't use. And uh, yeah, that, that should help you guys get going with an SKR. As you can see, we have the Ramps 1.4 in here. I think we'll add some more uh, as we have the ability to, which is something we don't necessarily think about very often because these resources are out there, but they're all over the place. Let's get rid of that. All right. First, we need to log in to the Pi and grab our config. Uh, there, there's multiple ways of editing your config, so you could uh, just open up your config here directly on your instance. Um, I use MOBA Xterm. There's many programs out there for uh, terminals. The Apple guys actually have a pretty awesome iTerm. You also have Putty. Uh, it's multi-platform. Uh, use whatever you know. Um, I prefer MOBA Xterm. It comes with an SCP, like you can see here on the left. So you can see all the files. Um, that are in my home directory. This is the home directory for Pi, and it tells you up there. My printer config is in here, but if you want to edit your config directly, you can use a you can use a text editor like Nano. And remember, you can hit you can hit Tab to auto auto complete. Um, you can also uh, double left click, and by default, Mobile Xterm doesn't. Paste in. Uh, I recently reinstalled MOBA Xterm, uh, but if you're using Putty, uh, the default behavior for right click is is paste. So there's multiple ways of getting in here, but you can come in here and this is a basic text editor. If you want something more advanced, but on the Pi, you already know what you're doing because you, now you're looking at VI or Vim. Uh, there's a couple other ones out there as well, but I would not recommend any of those to someone who. Um, it's pretty advanced. But the thing I don't like about Nano is I don't have a highlight, uh, what's the word for it, uh, like, like a language file. Uh, so everything in here is kind of bland, uh, using some standard uh, highlighting for coding. Uh, I just prefer not to do that. But I just want to show you, you can, you can do it in Nano. Uh, we are going to use uh, Notepad++. So let's head over to Notepad. I got my config up right now from my Pi. This, uh, just to make sure, 
We're going to log in. I'll pull up my config. Hit yes, overwrite. All right, this is my config as it stands right now. The things that I probably didn't cover very much uh, in the previous videos was setting your homing override, uh, specifically where your Z nozzle probe is located. So when I first bring up a printer, uh, the first thing I do is I'll comment this stuff out. Specifically, I'll comment this out. There's multiple ways you can do it. Uh, if you, I found if you right click and did a block comment, it actually puts it in the wrong spot and that will give you problems. Uh, it needs to be on the first uh, column in the line. So comment out uh, that section there. Uh, Reason being, I already know where my where my end stop is, but I'm gonna go through how how you would find this on your own. Uh, I would also add, oh, since I commented that line out, we're gonna move to the center of the bed. Is what we're gonna use is the probe to do Z, because you need all access is owned. Uh, technically speaking, my access to the, the Z would be home, but it'd be way up. It'd be anywhere where the carriage is at, and we couldn't quad gantry level uh, right now if we wanted to. So um, I'm just going to tell it where it's going to do its Z probe. And I'm going to come up here to my Z section, my stepper Z. I already have it set up here. Um, we are not going to use a... We're not going to use the end stop pin. We are going to use a virtual end stop. So here we can do a bulk comment. I can come over here, bulk and comment. Now, what we just did, uh, if you were to read the the Clipper Clipper documentation, uh, we just turned our probe into our Z end stop. Pretty simple. Well, and we already configured it to uh, do its probe in the middle of our bed. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. All right, so we've set up our probe as our Z end stop. We can, and we we saved that back to the Pi. So let's go to Octoprint, where we're going to interface uh, with the Raspberry Pi here. And I want to, I have terminal commands plugin set up, and I got a bunch of macros, our, our uh, different commands already set to buttons. But if you want to find them yourselves, you can always type in help. And anything that you have set up in your config, will be listed for a help command. And what we are going to be doing um, is some simple stuff. But I just wanted to remind you guys about this. And these are all the commands that are available on my current printer. Uh, yours is going to be different uh, based on how your config is. Um, most of our on twos, though, will be real similar to this. All right, so what we're going to do is a G28. That's We're going to home all three axes. And we will wait for the printer to home. Uh, my printer recently just finished its print job, so um, what I just did just now was I I just homed X, Y, and Z. Um, since we made that config change, my Z used the uh, inductive probe instead of the nozzle probe for the Z end stop position, and it went to my center of the bed and uh, probed there. And we can see where it's at with an M4, M114. So we're at 125x, 125y, and z10. Um, what we need to do is we need to find where our end stop is at. Um, what we need to do is we need to find where our end stop is at. When I say end stop, I'm talking about our nozzle probe. Um, that's what we need to first do. That's the first thing we need to do. So you can just, I come here to the control command uh, tab, and I bring my nozzle to just over where I have my probe where I have my nozzle probe located. And once I find it, um, I fine tune it. Uh, it helps to get a light out to find where this is located. Um, my printer's a little far away. I'm kind of looking at where my head is. I've already done all this. Uh, you're gonna wanna do this right next to your printer. And you're gonna wanna get your Z just above the pin. So that way you don't have parallax uh, uh, thrown off where you think it is at. Um, I actually know where mine is located. I already have it set up. Um, but this is just for demonstration purposes. 
and that's about right. I know it's not right because I can't. I'm not going to go over there and look at it. But let's say I have it over my pin. Well, I need to add that to my config. I'm going to do an M114, and this shows me being at 183x and 1y. Um, let's go put that into our config. Now I'm going to put what actually is back in my config. Uh, so let's head back over to our config here. All right. And we're going to go down to homing override. And right here is where we're going to put those values. We need to get rid of this line because we added that just to uh, find where our nozzle our, or our actual nozzle probe is located. Um, Z needed to be home. Because I have some Z moves in there. If you don't move Z, if you don't want to move Z, um, you can probably be fine with uh, not adding that. But I don't see why you wouldn't. Anyway, uh, my nozzle position is at X 175.5, Y minus 5. I have it at the front of my bed. Um, but if this is where my nozzle was located, I like it, where we just found, I would change this to X 103 and then Y1. And it's as simple as that. So we have now put where our nozzle is located um, in our homing override. We need to go back and change our Z and take it off of the virtual end stop. So right, I'll just comment this out. And then I'm going to go back to using my actual nozzle probe. And now that that is done, you can hit save we can move on to the quad gantry level. Before we do that though, you definitely wanna make sure that this is correct. So I already hit save up up, up above. Um, let's go back to Octoprint. Okay, we're gonna come in here. We're gonna do a G28. We wanna see it home, X and Y, and then come over to the nozzle probe and home Z off the nozzle probe. But it didn't do that. I bet you don't know why. Well, the way Clipper works is it loads the config every time you restart it. So we have to do a restart. Disconnects, and then it is ready. Now, if I do a G28, because what's happened is it, it is disconnected, reconnected, reloaded the configuration file for the printer. We needed to also do that, um, the restart, after we made those changes. I might not have made that clear, and I will probably have to put that in post-editing. But this time, it touched off on my nozzle probe and is sitting there wait, ready to go.